All right, back nine coverage of the second round action, sixth annual Persimmon Ridge retreat that we're here for, brought to you guys by MVP. I'm Luke Humphreys, joined by Tall Paul Omen. And it's a windy day. It's a totally different day than we saw first round. The scores on that front nine, definitely slower, not as hot. Bogeys on every single card. Um, Parker Welk looking to get this thing started. Yes, get things rolling here they're all the chasing Andy. lots of birdies on the back andy the cookie monster the circle two hound i don't know what we're gonna call him we're gonna come up with a nickname for him he's getting some action though some heat put on him by the finn from turku 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 however you say it mr vinyl makala hole 10 that is a par three we're starting off with a little wooded hole there's not many of them here at persimmon but this is a great one this is a nice little, mm, I want to say musket. Yeah, you got it. You want this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some of these hard holes that we have here, this one's right in front of you. The wind is kind of down in the trees, so not much there. You got to make it happen. The kicks are terrible, too. If you're off, oh, that's abnormally normal shot from Andy. A little low, but just... No kick. I like the no kick. You get to some funky places on this hole. Good shot from Germ. Heiser's out a bit, but that's great. Germ's throwing the disc well. Love to see it. It's that mid-range Parker's been loving. I've seen him throw it really hard a few times, so yeah. I knew he was going to have to dial that back and, and use some touch. And sometimes you just leak it a little left. Don't commit. That type of situation. Right in that left side. Oh. That was a stable putter there. Yeah, we saw two people on our card over here yesterday. The scramble rate is not good. You can get way in the woods on this hole. Man. 248 with some teeth. Andy just stayed right in the middle, luckily. So he's just got this straight shot. Looks like he just picked the same disc up. And he Ooh. might be a little less stable after that hit. Yeah, healthy roll, though. It could have went in those trees, and he's a big boy. He doesn't need to be under any tree or limbs or nothing. Parker, yeah, I feel like he's trying to throw these in. He, he woke up getting aggressive. Just Ran aggressive. that putt on hole two. Playing quick. Mm, Paul on a knee trying to straddle out and throw that one up there. He's going to be left with circle's edge for his par now. This would be a big putt. Sit. It does. Going to be taking the bogey, though. And no, man. This is just one of those greens you can't get aggressive on. And, and you pay the price when you go long the most. This is almost unmakeable. Park's trying to make it, though. Yeah. Oh. Fortunate dub. That happens quick. And you're giving some up to the field. Like you said, this is one you want to get. The 248 right in front of you. It's a nice par for Marweed, scrambling properly. Yeah, after that mishap on the tee, good little cleanup. Germ here with the only birdie look. There we go. Capitalizing. Yeah. Marweed was kind of pulling away from this entire group. Germ grabbing that birdie, staying within grasp. We do have the Eagle Bull par five coming up here, hole 11. Teeing off from out of bounds, players are going to need to make it past this sidewalk you see here to be in bounds, or else they go to a drop zone. Landing closer to the sidewalk sets up the big hyzer approach, which is typically how you see the Eagles gotten. It's only 827 feet, subtly uphill the whole way, probably more like 900, uh, but it's a placement shot to start. Tricky little win today. I like this forehand play, the backhand. Playing with the turnover, it was just getting beat down. 
Out there and pulling it a little bit. Kind of stays on the top shelf, though. You can go down into that little treed area, making your uh, exit even harder. Yeah, you can still get the birdie. Eagle plays out, but... I actually practiced this hole with Andy. We talked about the options. I talked about the eagle look and the, and the birdie look. That was look. money. And he's headed more towards a birdie look there. Yeah, I don't think he's even trying to trying to play for the eagle. It's basically a righty backhand smash smash. And this is how you do it. You kind of drag it over there. Oh, whoa. That had so much pace on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think, I think once Simon got to MVP, all those discs just started going a little further. <laughs> that was smashed. As is this. And I think he's going to be pinched off. But he might not be. Parker, a look. Just going to have to aim a little higher. He showed up aggressive. First hole, second hole. I think we might see some aggressive from him. Ooh. Just don't drop down awkwardly. Funky little early cedar for germ there coming out. Look at this wind, man. Whoa, headed towards the left side, OB. Oh, oh my no. goodness. Lifted up. Right through that tree. That's insane. You know what, though? That was only his second. He'll drop three. Most likely save a par. Parker, he did have that shot. Is getting aggressive. Launched that thing. Mm -hmm. That's about 100 out. Long jump putt. Really low ceiling, so probably not going to see the eagle. But All right, so this is what you're left with if you go past the normal landing zone. You've just got low ceiling forehand. If you mess it up, you've got low ceiling forehand again. Hard to tell how far out he is. That's his driver, though. Going destroyer. Probably about 360, 370. Oh, yeah. Beautiful shot there. Two paces from out of bounds. Really controlled. Yeah. That's a two-line AJ that I actually held hostage oh, God, when you were down in Houston because <laughs> Yuli stole my disc, and I wasn't going to give it back until I got my disc back. Beautiful upshot from Paul. That sounds like a courtesy violation. <laughs> On Yuli. Somebody. Somebody stole found a disc. Another person stole found a disc. And stole founders keepers, as they say. <laughs> Do it. Oh. For the eagle. That would have been a nice boost. Man, he just didn't hise her in there like he thought it would. Germ fighting for that birdie. Good birdie. Yeah. I mean, he still had the full driver in after... Two for the third. For sure. You typically want to be shorter than that. A lot of people throwing putters and stuff into this basket, but Brady's a birdie. Parker's getting the same one as Germ. Good bird. Andy tapping in that par, that crazy out of bounds. His disc just kept on lifting, eventually making its way all the way across the fairway. Hold 12, par 4, 676. This one, subtly downhill. I'm talking about all these subtle slopes, but you can't really tell that they're there if you're not thinking about them. You've got to consciously move the angle of the disc just a little bit or you end up nose down or possibly throwing it into the ground. This one has some subtle nuances here. The forehand seems like the shot, mm. but you leave it on hyzer, that thing's skipping into the bushes on the right. You gotta test this OB left. Um, which Germ is doing. Totally testing no. it. Unreal. Turned out of the hand. He'll have a chance to save the par. I think he's about 380 from that Push basket. That thing. And 
that's going to be out of bounds too, isn't it? I believe so. In a very similar spot to uh, where Germ went out. So both those guys are going to be in the 400-ish range trying to save that par. Parker just full uncoiling on this, and he's a little out of sorts, it looks like. Yeah. I mean, that, that looked like 110% attempt there and crushing it and yeah then, it's only yeah. 676 it's it's two shot hole don't necessarily agree with getting that aggressive but Andy playing high this could leak a little right skip straight Ooh, for him great check right in that little bubble forehand in probably okay so it's not any shorter than 400 This looks good. Just got to get right. Oh, my goodness. He throws forehands really far. Very still, far. Still one of the best at getting some distance, getting that full ride. That thing would have gone 450 easy. It's going to be an awkward spot, though. Yeah. Punched into those trees a bit. This is going to get right, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Or trickle. A little 15 footer. Parker probably just playing that thing back into the fairway. Yep. Andy got what looks like a fairway driver. So it's probably playing just under 300 feet. This has got a lot of hyzer. But hits and connects, what? drops down. Yeah, that was headed to a bad spot. Yeah, high with some speed on it. That spot was um, in the basket because it doesn't matter where Andy's disc is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a, a cooler putt for the fans. Germ, okay, he actually fought through. Window. Get out Bingo. of here. Bingo, nice par save, Germ. Seriously? Somehow got pin high into that tree. Oh, what? Par for Parker. He just lobbed it up from a knee. Willed it. That putt was crazy. Look at him. Oh, only you know how hard that one was. That angle was crazy. All right, Marweed. Now for birdie. Are we calling it good? No. He is human. The computer didn't calculate right. He put a tall guy in a tree, man. It was <laughs> a little tough. Yeah. Okay. So Germ, the only birdie in the crew, after being straight up in the woods. Par. Oh, so for, he threw three excuse shots. Excuse me. You're, you're exactly right. No birdies in this group? No. Um, Hole 13, beautiful little par three. One of the best on the course, just that big tree to miss, Paul. It's a ripper. What do you, you mean by it. that? I mean. It's only 330, what do you mean by that? I mean, what's Jerm got in his hand here? Full distance driver. A boss? Yeah. He's gonna throw it about. You gotta hit this disc. I mean, you can end up past the basket, but. It's about a 70. You'll be happy with yourself. Four percenter. With a little body English. Showing us the forehand route there. Now Paul Crane's going to do the backhand. A little lower ceiling. you got to penetrate this thing. Something a little stable. That's Hit it flat. Nice. Slide Annie. Let it come on out and skip up the hill. Parker going to that mid-range. Boom. Did he really just... Oh, my. Is that, a, that can't be a mid-range. I was about to say. I, I just said this one's a ripper. If he threw a mid-range, then... <laughs> he's a certified ripper. Overturned. Get headed that towards edge. that OB, but hooks up. Makes its way into circle, or edge of. A.K.A. in the bucket. That's Andy Marweed. 
AVRX3 approach for germ. This is definitely one of the ones you want to get. Oh no. A little low. Yeah, yesterday he was throwing those in at approximately 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Just smashing them high in the chains. Could have been a little wind. Nice birdie there from Paul. He's hanging around. Oh, yeah. Wants to stay on lead card. Good birdie from Parker. If he throws that disc on the next hole, as well as mid range. All right. We'll see. There's no way that could be made out of the exact same plastic. It's absolutely impossible, actually. Impossible. Yeah. Zero percent chance. This is 379. It's a speed control hole. Can you get that speed right? Do you know how to dial that in to 379? Because if you're short, the putt sketch, and if you're long, you're rolling down the hill. Oh, yeah. Popular play, the forehand. Tough Digs. win today, but a nice dig. So, <clears throat> when you have a little dry bunker like that, it's interesting. If he was a little more online, he hits the down slope of the hill, skips into the woods. But because he's a little less online, it hits the up slope of the other side of the berm, sits there in circle two. Parker puts that out a little wider. That, that looked nice. I think that's how you do it. Germ going less than full speed here. Looks like a bird. Look at it just hold out there. It looks great. Oh, oh no. Two feet too far. That's twice he's almost rung it up. Man, he just the other one little, was for Eagle, but little far. Andy going one angle higher. And getting so much oh my. That was a big skip. Big drift of wind. It was an odd ground reaction. No damage though, taking a par. Look at these putts. That was beautiful. Big putts from Paul Kranz. Just about circles edge, basket on top of a little knoll. Picking up a stroke on the leader. No problem. Good putt for him. Just over the cage. There we go. All right, so three birdies. None of them being our leader. Everybody getting a stroke. Getting a little closer. Lead's only three now. Maybe and still. we did see those guys on chase and third card putting the heat on. So we have ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. Headed into just a beautiful hole. 15 elevated tee box. It's just under 600 feet to this tree. And you see people doing it, which is crazy. This green raised basket with OB pretty much everywhere playing right there by our pro village as you can see we're all camped up having a good time this week um, you just don't want to roll into the parking lot it means you're taking an extra stroke yeah it helps to have a wind read on this hole and if anything you'll see the first person do that there we go overturn it a little bit it's the mistake you can make without giving up a stroke any ob on this hole does go to drop zone so it's pretty penalizing if you're gonna turn it overturn it keeping it low like that is the way to do it oh this is toasted this is a good one right in the right angle oh yeah up into the flats he'll probably be able to see the basket from there makes all the difference in that approach I think Germ did watch some coverage. 
I love this. If you've got a good forehand, you can flip something up. No need to complicate it. Stay to that right side, too. That left side's a little bit lower. You keep on that right side. Maybe you can see the basket, the flag, something. Yep. Andy going almost the exact same spot. There's got to be something to it. Wisdom. Okay, so you can see the flag on the top of the basket here. This is completely blind now. He's just watching for the spotter's flags. Ooh. He smoked that thing, dude. See? Wow. Looked like it could have been a park job. It's going to need to work for it. And by work, I mean not at all. It's Andy Marvin. Do what he do. Uh, OTB Roadshow. Greg there helping out on the camera. Yeah, Greggy Biscuits. It's got to chill out. That's headed OB if it doesn't. Come on. This ground is so hard on this green, Paul. You rarely see the discs check up. Almost everything skips. So you got to play it. You know it's there. Yeah. Swing it out left. There's tons of space. I think a lot of people are thinking about that OB behind the basket, but that OB on the left there, just kind or on the right, it just kind of sneaks up out of nowhere. Wow. Just when we're talking about getting that skip, Paul gets nothing. Left with a circle's edge or at a high basket with OB everywhere. Just a caught a bit of whiskers. Disc golfer's dream. It's got some angle. Beautiful, just a bit shy. Man, that's 40 feet. And for as far as he threw that drive, that was a, was a little lax. Come on, Parker. Confident bid. Yeah, it helps to be dead on when there's a flag up top. Yeah, good thing there's a flag up there. Veterans love to just shoot you off into nowhere. Dude, back to back. Both those guys, I'll, I'll give them credit. They got the, the disc basket high. They didn't hit any pan. and Just, you know, that's... Was Jerm out of bounds? Why did he not take a full meter? Hmm. Questions I need answered. I think a meter just looks smaller next to him. <laughs> I think that was a meter. That's how you get it. Like Shaq holding a basketball, you know? Oh, yeah. Andy grabbing the bird. Snagging a stroke on everybody, too, on Germ. And just when it felt like they were making some momentum, they were catching him up, pulling away again. We got a new box on the next hole. We got a tricky 17. And then we got an absolutely devastatingly hard hole 18th day. The way it's playing, it is wrecking people's rounds. Yeah. So anything can happen. Hold on, guys. Don't go anywhere yet. Hole 16. We're flying from the regular box here. The guys are playing a shorter tee box that's wooded. And with this wind, it's actually pretty dicey. When I saw the tee box, I thought to myself, like, we're going to eat this alive. But with the current conditions, it's actually a good hole. Yeah, I can't remember the uh, the distance here. It's like two and some two change under three hundred. Handy, if you're a pretty good putter, this is what I like here. Just a, a stable putter approach disc. You throw it flat, just over the hill. Drop it back down. Oh, this is what happens when you throw it flat. It, it veers. Towards the OB. This is you what gotta, happens, Larry. You got to put a little move on it. I know you got that A3 dial that kind of stands up for you. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. We're, we're all... I like this play. Slide that putter up. Slide. No, he really didn't. Pretty rocky. Yeah, it's like putter distance. That low ceiling. Those rocks there. It's kind of a funky little, little turnover. Sure, just right a away. foot high. You really, you just got to clear that berm in front of the box by like inches right. to keep it high. Either way, backhand, forehand. It's tricky. Yeah, I mean, all, all these guys have seen so many comebackers missed that at this point, it, it's just hard to run baskets. Unless you're Parker. And then you came to run, you're going to stay running. Born to run. Oh, you 
beautiful looking putt from Andy. Just never dropped. Well, there the flags moving when Andy putted. There was nothing. Another three putt from Parker. Ooh. Nice. That's a snag right there. I'm not going to lie. It probably helps to have a rubber rim if you're hitting one chain in the top right-hand corner. Facts. Is it a thing? Let us know in the comments. Do you think that rubber rim discs grab chains better? Is that a thing? I'm skeptical. But the science seems to make a little sense. So let me know what you think. Headed into hole 17. It's a... Uh, Mid-length par three, but this green right here, downright nasty ball. Super nasty. Got that sand in front. You're not getting much skip there. I don't know. You can play the mid-range, 348. I mean, it's a little downhill. Mid-range is nice, but on a day like this. Total speed control hole. Again, you're going to see a lot of fairway drivers. You know, nine-speed, stable stuff. That's a dirty putt range right there. It really is. He's going to be dealing with a headwind left to right. An old skinny leg basket. This looks really good. Oh. Come on now. Oh. Oh, it's okay. sad. Oh, curl. That's about 50-50. I saw Kevin Jones get his first birdie of the day on a whole... On this shot, that looked so similar. Looked like it was going to check up, Ooh. get down there, rolled OB. Jeremy was almost thinking about some water early there. Stop. The igloo. Okay. That's another little dicey putt on this green, but he's in the circle. Parker playing fast. Oh, that's that a good check. shot there. That sandy check. About 11 feet for his birdie. I like. Wow. This is the furthest out. Well played from these guys. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, spinny boy. That is a nasty little putt. Gosh, as soon as it got back to a little bit of hyzer, it just lifted it up right over Raised the cage. Raised right in. There we go. Big nice. putt from Jerm. You could tell it wasn't completely comfortable. That tailwind uh, putt. He he tailwind that, side. He got up off that back foot, though. He really pushed. Got that, got that weight moving forward. This is not great for his typical putt, how low he brings it. It's then got to go even higher to get up, but well done from Andy. I think that's the thing. You know, he lets you believe that he's got a typical putt, but that boy just works angles wherever he is. No. That's the, that fast play. It just raised up on him. <sighs> Gave away a bird there. Got the par headed into hole 18. Man, this thing is playing so tough. Two tens have already been carded on this hole as our lead card rolls up to it. 863. It's probably playing into minimum 20 miles an hour of headwind today. OB right the entire way with the water. And you've got OB left sidewalk off the drive. It's a nasty one. Just being in bounds off this tee shot is really kind of accomplishment. Today it was really ripping straight at your face. Bouncing off the cart. Yeah, sorry, the, the women's pad there. Did you catch it? Looked like it did, yeah. Big skip. Andy, looking to duplicate that. He's been playing this one for par, not trying to get too much. Oh Oof. my, but this one's hanging out. Needs to stay high. No way. By about three feet. Dude, that was kind of a mash too. Really trusting it out there. The old pucker shot. <laughs> sure. This, um, this kind of going towards that out of bounds left. Just don't oh, skip. I... Okay. 
reasonable. Yeah. But far. I think he was puckered, too. The further you go left, the further that approach is. Oh, man. my gosh. Yeah, it's definitely makes you uh, makes it a little easier to decide to lay up. Oh, this is that disc Parker was throwing all day, too, and that one's well out into the lake. Going to need a kayak to get that one back. That's a good one. <laughs> playing, playing quick again and not really getting himself very far down the fairway there. Definitely could have eased his approach in. I'm guessing this is just a layup for... Yeah, this is just a... So the Heiser, a little early out of the hand. The OB does uh, move away from the players there, though, so little chance he can yeah. find it left. It just makes your approach longer, like we talked about. Here for Parker, this is a big tee shot. Maybe that's the disc he's been throwing all day. Hopefully. Don't want to lose a dog on 18. No. Not one of the main dogs. That's a huge forehand. That's like 50, 60 pass pin high from back there. Yeah. Seems to be playing with a bit of aggression there. Huge. Germ's going for it. He's trying to get that birdie. Prior to lead card getting here, only three birdies on this hole all day. I love this. Um, Germ. Monster shot. It wiggled all the way back down, but stopped on the wood. Did it really? Yep. Goodness, why you gotta mess with that boy's heart like that? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He just threw a fantastic shot. Two fantastic shots, just to get himself a putt. Yeah, just to even, you know, believe and go for it. Like, yeah. everyone was laying up. To this point, Vino Makala, Drew Gibson, Jake Kiebenheimer, the only birdies on 18. What a list. All those guys so far. Very far. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like you throw far, great. But, I mean, to get yourself a makeable putt, a runnable putt, too, yep. that's impressive. Oh, Paul Kranz skipping off of the logs <laughs> right there at the bottom of the green. He's in great position. And he's made this shot look easy. Oh, my gosh. I've done the complete opposite. So, let's see it, Andy. Are you throwing the forehand? Let's just focus on Andrew here. And the commentary. That's what I thought. Park job. Beautiful. Looking good. My friend over here, Tall Paul, he is uh, better at forehanding than he thinks. Guys, in the comments, tell Paul to throw more forehands. He's good at them. Not on this upshot. The wind, I didn't think, was great for it today. Mm -hmm. The forehand's feeling good, though. You can talk yourself out of whatever you want, man. Yeah. You can talk yourself into it, too. Like this birdie putt here for Germ to become the fourth birdie of the day. Let's go, Germ. I like that. Have yourself a day, bud. Yeah, great little finish from him. Getting back to within four of the leader. That's striking distance. Big time. Never know what the wind's going to do tomorrow. All right, Paul, to stay three back. And keep that spot aboard the final card. Find some great golf. Fantastic golf. Man, that putt looks good. He's been just smooth throwing, keeping himself out of trouble. Yeah. They're all going to be chasing this man right here. Well, I'm not going to lie. He loves playing with a lead. Does he? He does, man. He thrives it's in it. It's kind of the best place to be, you know, ahead of everyone else. And one of the best putters in the field. <laughs> yeah. It's just demoralizing that your competition to see putt after putt go into that bucket, but it's anybody's game. Anybody's. Let's see this this leaderboard. All right, this is. Let's see their back nine first. But Andy keeping it quiet, just sneaking two birdies in there. Everyone else has more birdies, but got more blemishes too. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, Paul Kranz. That's a nice five birdie back nine, four under par. Beautiful stuff from him. And the leaderboard now. Ooh. Drew Gibson jumping back onto that lead card along with newcomer Luke Sampson. Power to the Lukes right here. Raven Newsom also right there. Jeremy Colling sitting right there in fourth place. Neither of those guys going to be on our lead card, but both within striking distance. So 
Like I said, everybody, it's anybody's game. Morris just kept everybody honest. It looked like six, six, five, six, five. Like no one really popped really off. Did. Yeah, Nathan Queen's eight, which was I think ten sixty rated, was really the only thing hot on the day. Stud. Absolutely. Tomorrow we're looking at a little bit less wind. It's gonna be a perfect day for disc golf. Somebody's getting crowned sixth annual Persimmon Ridge Retreat champion tomorrow. So come join us. Once again, big thanks to MVP for this coverage. For Tall Paul Omen, I'm Luke Humphreys. Thanks for watching GK Pro. We'll see you on round three.